It is only thanks to emergency generators and a whole lot of scrambling here that we are able to say this Thursday night, good evening from our NBC News headquarters in Midtown Manhattan, where we are in the midst of what appears to be a colossal and history-making blackout. Not just this city, but to massive points north and west, as far west as Cleveland, Ohio, and as far north as the Canadian cities of Ottawa and Toronto. The city of Detroit affected. Their airport, the first major metropolitan air center to shut down. Akron, Ohio, New York's capital city of Albany, on west to Syracuse, as far south as some of the residential sections of the state of New Jersey. And certainly all of this city and outlying boroughs, and that means thousands of subway riders in the middle of dark tunnels, people stuck in elevators trapped across this city in ways they haven't been since the first colossal blackout of the modern age in 1965. We should say early and often here in this broadcast tonight that officials from state, local, and federal agencies are saying this is not the result of any kind of terroristic act. Rather, what they prefer to call a natural cause, a power system that failed and took a whole lot of others with it. This was the scene in New York City. After the power went out, thousands of people simply decided to start walking. The most immediate concern was for thousands believed to be stranded underground in the dark in the New York subway system or in elevators in skyscrapers. Power officials say they believe the outage was caused by the overload and subsequent failure of the Niagara Mohawk power grid. The grid affects 84,000 miles of power lines. But there have been so many glitches in communication today. You see everybody walking down the street, Times Square, Midtown Manhattan, everywhere, trying to make phone calls. It took us over an hour just to get one signal through. Uh, buildings were evacuated, so clearly there were hundreds and hundreds of people on the streets. Sidewalks spilled over into the roadways. Traffic police were trying to clear people off the roads so that ambulances and cars and police cars could get through. If one generator goes out, the others pick up the slack, at least in theory. There are three major grids in this country, in the east, in the west, and a separate one that serves Texas. And while they've been generally dependable, they sometimes have an Achilles heel. A failure in one place can trip circuit breakers in other locations, creating a domino effect as circuit after circuit goes offline. That's what happened in previous New York City blackouts. Officials said they'd put safeguards in place so that it wouldn't happen again, but it did. Here in California, officials who run this state's power grid were asked if it could happen here. Now more about that power outage in the West. Tonight it is affecting millions of people in parts of Southern California, including San Diego, and it extends all the way to Arizona and down south to Mexico. Bill Whitaker has the latest on that. Scott, the power went out around 3.40 Pacific time this afternoon, and as you said, it is widespread across all of San Diego County, Southern Orange County, into northern Mexico, Baja Peninsula, affecting the city of Tijuana, and east into Arizona, and it is affecting millions and millions of people. And as you might expect, it's causing great concern. Power company officials have urged people, they've stressed, that this is not an act of terrorism. They call it a system failure, a major transmission failure. Now this comes in the midst of a tremendous searing heat wave here across the southwest. Temperatures as high as 113 degrees in Yuma, Arizona, 107 degrees in Palm Springs, and this has been going on now for three days. The power failure has knocked out traffic lights, it is causing major traffic jams, and this just at the start of rush hour. It's creating, as you can see there, it's creating quite a mess. The power is out, of course, in homes and businesses. Some people are trapped in elevators. Power company officials tell the region's residents, don't expect a quick fix. We want all of our customers to be focused on their emergency supply plans. Make sure you've got plenty of water. Make sure you have plenty of supplies. Use those emergency plans that you have uh, talked about over, over the years. 
and we will do everything we can to get power supply back. Right now, the National Guard is on standby. State emergency managers are activated. Schools have been canceled, and of course, hundreds of flights in California have been affected. Yeah, the situation serious, as you might imagine. Millions of people right now waiting for the power to come back on as soon as possible. KCRA 3's Richard Sharp joining us live from Folsom tonight. He's at the Nerve Center for California's Power Grid with new information on this outage. Richard. Galston, all night, Cal Lasso is going to try and get power back on in Southern California, and it is no easy task. We have learned in just the last hour or two that a worker at an Arizona power plant may have triggered this entire series of event, was moving a piece of monitoring equipment that may have tripped a line. The cascading effect, dozens of power plants went offline, causing a major problem for Southern California. More than two million people in Southern California, Arizona, and Mexico are without power after two main power transmission lines into San Diego were tripped and went offline. That was just the start of the problem. As the local power plants were trying to compensate for the loss of those power imports, they were coming up in uh, increasing capacity and suddenly tripped offline. With no power, traffic jams turned to traffic nightmares. Two nuclear power plants were forced to shut down. And to get the power back on is no easy task. Even if the power plants are working, they can't just simply run the power back on, flip the switch, so to speak. They have to bring these power plants back online very slowly so they can have the full load of the electricity. If it goes too fast, it could shut down again. It's a wintry whiteout as a powerful blizzard blankets the northeast this morning with up to two feet of snow expected in some places. States of emergency were declared from the Carolinas all the way to Maine. The storm, which brought an unusually white Christmas to parts of the southeast, dumped snow as far south as Mississippi and Georgia. It pushed northward on Sunday, aided by a strong low pressure system off the mid-Atlantic coast gaining strength along the way. The wet, heavy snow knocked out power for hundreds of thousands of people and created treacherous conditions up and down the eastern seaboard.